Fault is a CRM tool, customer relationship management, that is light like Notion and powerful like a full-fledged CRM tool such as HubSpot or Pipedrive. You can use Folk, especially if you are a startup or small and medium business, and get the most out of it because of its simplicity and minimalism in terms of interface, and yet because of its power in terms of having dynamic interactions to each of your contacts that you can't really have in Notion. But Folk, essentially in the interface of it, looks quite similar to Notion. We have databases for contacts and companies. These are the main data object in Folk. You have contacts, there are people, and you have companies, the companies for which some of those people work. So when it comes to Folk, this is what the interface looks like. It is quite similar to Notion in terms of the structure where we have database in the form of a table. And on the left hand side, you have a sidebar menu where you have your groups of contacts. Now, the first thing that you do when using Folk is setting up your groups. Groups are collections of people that you want to keep track of. So in this example, I set up four main groups, Craft, the professional group, and these are taken from Carl Newport's idea of a deep life. We have four key buckets, Craft, that is your work, and leisure activities that require your focus or manual work. You have contemplation, that's part of the philosophical inquiry for a deep life, constitution, health, fitness, and any sport activity, and the community, your involvement in a community or multiple communities in life. So those are the four buckets of a deep life. And today we're going to focus on the professional bucket, craft, and add example contacts to it to see how it works and why it might be a good choice or maybe not for you, especially if you are a startup or a small business and you want to be dynamic in the way you interact with customers while at the same time giving them the most care possible because when you are a small business or a startup the way you care about customers and every single one of them matters a lot especially if you want to be a company of one as Paul Jarvis says in his book company of one where you question growth and you do things that don't scale and doing things that don't scale as Paul Graham says also means taking care of every single customer and interacting personally with every single customer or audience member always, whenever you can, with the most authentic posture that you can handle. So Folk can be your CRM tool where you manage all your contacts so that you can foster that personal one-on-one -on -one connection with your customers or prospects. So here is a Notion page where we have some steps that we're going to go through to see how Fork works and how it compares to Notion in terms of its dynamic nature. So the first thing that you do in Fork is you can create groups. As you see here, I created groups and you can create groups just by clicking on the plus button right here and you can create a new group. And each group also has an icon that you can change picking from this selection here. Now, the next thing that you can do in Folk is you can connect your Gmail account. If you connect your Gmail account, that means that your contacts come to life. You can record every single interaction that you have with your contacts, and you can also send emails directly from Folk. So if you are part of a sales team of a small company, you can just stay in Folk and nurture your relationships within one app without needing to use your email management tool. So the way you can connect your email is by going to settings here at the left corner and then you have the accounts tab where you can share your interactions using the email or multiple emails right here and when you share your interactions then your contacts come to life and every time you have a new interaction that will be recorded in the contacts page the next key thing that you want to do in folk is adding your contacts if you already have a list of contacts you can export it in a csv for example you have a list of contacts in notion then you can export your csv and upload that csv to Fork by clicking on the three dots at the top right corner, then you can do import CSV and you can choose your CSV file from the computer and those contacts are going to be uploaded to Fork with the related fields that are going to match. For example, you have the email address of that person that's going to match the email field in Fork. The second option to add a contact is by adding the contact manually and you can do that by clicking on the add button right here at the top right corner where you can add a new contact just like that, create contact. And then here you have name and surname. You can choose whether it's a person or a company. And you can choose which bucket it's going to be part of. Let's say craft for this example. 
Then here you have a notes, job title. Then you have email, phone number, birthday, address, any URLs. And you also have the gender that you can select right here. And these are the default properties in Fork. But you can also customize your databases of contacts or companies by adding new properties. And this is something that we're going to see later. When you create a contact, here we have the first name and last name that were missing. And you can create the contact just like that. And here the contact is now part of your broad database with all the fields that you have here. The third option of adding contacts to Folk is by using their browser extension. You can use it, for example, when you are in LinkedIn to scrape data from a LinkedIn page and add all the contacts and their information to Folk directly from your browser without needing to enter them manually. But that really is outside of the scope of this video, which is more of an overview of Folk and its power and its dynamic interface for interactions. So maybe we can see that in a future video. And that's how you add a contact. Now, when it comes to the database structure of Folk, each database, each table is specific to the group that you have. For example, here we have a table for the craft group. If I were to add a new property here, which we call user, let's say this is going to be the owner of the contact, especially useful if you are in a team, then here you can choose the user. In this case, it's only me, so you don't have a lot of choice. But if I add this property here, then now if I go to the contemplation group, that property is not here. And that's because each database, each group is separate from each other. So when you edit the structure of a database in one group, that structure will not populate across the other groups. The power of folk comes into play when opening a contact page and seeing all the interactions. And you can also bulk send messages to a list of contacts by using custom variables and personalizing the message. And you can do that very easily in a frictionless way, which is why I think Folk is a very valuable tool for small and medium businesses that want to remove as much friction as possible from the relationships with customers and non-customers. So when opening a contact page, you will see here the properties similar to what you see in Notion usually. Here you have the company that you can add directly from here. Then you have notes and all the other properties that we saw earlier, including the ones that we just added, like the status, for example, which can be part of a pipeline view and the user right here. Now on the right hand side, you have all the interactions and this is going to populate automatically once you connect your Gmail account through the setting that we saw earlier. Then you have a comments tab when you can add any comments about this user, any of the interactions, and you can also mention the users if you're working in a team by using the at command, very much like you can do in Notion. And you have also reminders that you can set to follow up on the specific user. For example, if I want to follow up with Simone in a week, I can set up a reminder here. I can also give it a name. And you have who you want to notify in your team. And you have the date of the reminder. And you can also make it a recurring reminder, which is a powerful feature that is not available in Notion yet instead. So we can do weekly then confirm and the reminder is set up right here. In addition to reminders and seeing the entire history of interactions, you can also create views of the contacts that you have specific to each group. For example, here, the default views are always going to be all people and all companies, although you can also delete them from here or rename them. However, you can also create new views like this pipeline that I just created, for example, where each contact is displayed based on the status they are in. And this is particularly useful for your sales cycle or sales team to manage the contacts in the pipeline and move them around, similar to what you would do in HubSpot or Pipedrive or Notion as well. And each card, each contact is effectively a page that you can open to see all the properties that we saw earlier, as well as interactions, comments, and reminders. One last very powerful feature of Folk is that you can send bulk messages to a group of people. So let's say we are in the craft group right here and I want to select all the contacts in here or I can also select specific contacts from the list and I can also add filters and then I can message all 
And here you can see that whenever you send a message to a list of people, by default, the email that is going to be the sender is this non-reply at fault message.com. But you can change this. You can customize the email that is listed as the sender by adding a new sender right here. It will be redirected to the account settings where you have the senders tab where you can add a new sender right here and Fork will provide you with the DNS settings to add to your domain provider to make sure that from now on the sender of your emails in Fork is your custom email and this only works if you have a custom email domain. Now when typing a message here you have the subject and then down here on the body of the message, you can use five words. For example, you can type hello, and then you can type slash, which is the command, similar to Notion, that opens up the list of variables that you can use. Let's say we're gonna use name, and then how are you doing? All the best, Simon. And so this right now is gonna take the variable name for each contact and customize the variable so that you don't need to do the work all the time. So here you can review your messages before sending them. And you can switch between them on the right hand side. You can see we have two contacts that we're sending this message to. And this is what it looks like for the first contact. And this is what it looks like for the second contact. And you can customize the message specifically for each contact right here. For example, let's say for this contact, we also wanna ask something else like how you're doing and how is your job going? And now this message is going to be customized to the second contact, whereas if I switch back to the first contact, you see that we only have the question, how are you doing? Whereas for the second contact, we have how you're doing and how is your job going? And when you're ready to send the message, you can send the messages to these two people. In this case, I don't have any email addresses associated with these contacts, so I can't really send the messages effectively. And really, that is it for what I wanted to show about Folk and the power of Folk as a CRM that can be minimalistically stripped down to the essential like Notion and yet incredibly powerful as a CRM tool to send custom messages to people and truly take care of your customers and your audience and prospects to make sure that your company of one can distinguish itself from the competition by doing things that don't scale. Thank you for watching and see you soon.